Hello, this is Craig from bizbox.co.uk. In this video I'm going to show you how to paint a um, Nurgle Death Guard Marine in the colours of the Apostles of Contagion. So, they're in the book. They are this colour scheme here. Really cool sort of transition into orange, isn't it? Um, really cool. Um, I've been using the airbrush to do that transition for most of my guys, such as this guy here. Um, he's still a work in progress, but... He looks pretty cool. And the guy we are painting is this guy right here, and the guy you'll see in the thumbnail. Um, he's come out really nice, and he was great fun to paint, so um, I'm not using the airbrush, I'm just using actual um, just paintbrushes all the way through with GW Paints. So let's just get straight into it. So here we have our Death Guard miniature that we are going to be painting today. Um, he is from the Dark Imperium box set, and I've just replaced his head with one from the Chaos Knights box set from Age of Sigma. Oh, it looks quite cool. And um, I had two I had two squads of these, so the second squad I've had to sort of just change up a little bit. So we're gonna start by base coating him in Ogren camo. So you could if you um, really want to start with the Death Guard green and then do Ogren camo over over, um, I would recommend that if you used a black primer. Um, I've used a grey primer here. I'm, I'm a big fan of the Army um, Painter Base Grey. Uh, it's a fantastic um, primer and I use it on the majority of my miniatures. So as you can see, as we are using the Ogren Camo, which is a layer paint, we are certainly going to need two or three thin coats to get a nice smooth finish on this. So um, this colour scheme is primarily um, orange. However, I start with the green, and we sort of we're going to end up doing a sort of a green to orange gradient on all the armour, and it's going to look pretty cool. Hopefully, for miniatures that I've tried out so far, um, as mentioned in the intro, uh, airbrushed. But it should hopefully come out almost identical or very. Very similar, hopefully. So, just work your way around the miniature until you have a nice, smooth base colour. Okay, so he's had three um, thin coats now, he's, and as you can see, that's um, well, quite a nice coat. You don't have to worry about this being absolutely perfect at this stage because we're gonna, we are going to cover most of it. So, when I um, did some with the airbrush, I used um, the Minotaur and um, Badger Minotaur colour jaundice, um, a quite aptly named. However, you can get almost exactly the same colour by mixing some Zemesi desert, desert with a couple, um, a little bit of Carrick Stone. So um, I'd say maybe three parts Zemesi to one part Carrick Stone. You could even just use pure Zemesi desert if you don't really want to mix up a lot for a, for a batch. Um, the colours are very similar, just that the jaundice is slightly lighter. So I thinned that down just a little bit. And um, we're basically going to paint, paint two thirds, three quarters of this armour um, from the bottom up. So we sort of leave the top quarter or third, um, it's all preference really, um, on every uh, armour panel. So we'll show you at the bottom here. Now, um, I haven't thinned that out quite to a glaze. I'm not too worried about um, a really smooth transition here. Um, you could if you want, um, just do several glazed layers. However, I have still thinned it out. I want more of a smoother transition when we move into the next colour. So I'm going to work um, around every armour panel in exactly the same way. Now you don't have have to do it um, exactly like this, but um, I'm just sort of going by the artwork in in the book. And it seems to have all the orangey colours towards the bottom. So I'll continue going around with the miniature 
like this. And once I've done this first coat, I'm just going to apply another coat in exactly the same way, but then focus on the bottom half where we've, where we've done. That will build up a little bit of a transition, but like I say, it's not going to be as smooth as it would be with the airbrush, but I'm not really too, too fussed about it with this colour. So the next colour um, I used, um, again when I did the airbrushing, I used the um, Minotaur colour, so I used Citrus Orange. But if you're using Citadel colours, then um, I'm just going to use Jokero Orange. You could add a tiny bit of red into it to make it more like Citrus Orange. But I quite like the Jokero Orange as it is anyway. The two colours are very similar. So I've thinned that out. Almost to a glaze. I'm um, not quite a glaze. But still very thin. And we're going to start building this up in the, the lower portion of all the armor plates. So like the bottom quarter. Again, if you want a really smooth transition, you could really glaze out and build up over several layers. I'm doing it fairly thin to give us a nice transition. So um, I just got quick, quickly interrupted as um, I had a delivery <laughs> come up the door. Always a way. So as you can see now, um, we're starting to get a nice sort of gradient going from the green to the orange. That's looking really nice. This is a very interesting um, colour scheme. Um, certainly my favourite out of the ones um, in the booklet, what came with Dark Imperium. Hence why I have chosen to do my stuff in it. So just work your way around, just doing all these bottom areas like that. I'm sorry if I'm not showing it too well on camera. It's always quite difficult to paint properly on camera. But I do my best. So once all this is dry, I'm just going to do a very fine fine line along the bottom with the Jokara orange. Just to make it a bit um, richer at the very bottom. So I'll just go around and finish up and then we can move on to the next part. So before we move on to the next colour, um, I was just looking at the artwork again and these are sort of more orange um, than they are sort of the green and and khaki coloured. So what, I'm, what I've started doing, I've done on the leg here, is I just made a thin glaze of a Jokera orange and I've gone over um, most of the leg with a Jokera orange just to build up a bit more of an orange colour on these. So I'll show you for example on this leg here. Just very thin Jokera orange just glazing up just like that, and that will enrich the lower part as well as bringing these colours together just a little bit more. And um, when I was looking at some of the ones that I've airbrushed, um, there's a lot more orange on them also, as I went a bit higher up with it. You see on the arm as well, so it helps bring the colour up a little bit, and it also helps the transition look a bit smoother. Um, I also have the Lord of Contagion, um, he's in exactly the same stage as this guy is now, except he was airbrushed. Then you see um, a bit more orange on him, but still um, looking quite nice. Um, I'm really enjoying this colour scheme. So I'm just going to bring this orange up in some areas. Of course, um, there's still a lot of green on show because there's other areas um, that we haven't painted yet, which will be different colours. So next up, we're going to start doing the trim and the metal areas. 
So, the trim on all the armour for these guys, and the gun casing as well, is like a sort of um, dark bronzy colour. So, warp rock bronze is the perfect colour for this. So I've given it a good shake, and I'm going to wax some on my palette. I'm not a massive fan of a lot of the GW metallics, certainly the bronzes and coppers and stuff, I'm not a fan of at all. However, I will look to try and use GW colours whenever I can in these videos, as they are the most um, accessible, and most people have them over other paints. Um, However, if you do use other paint lines, then um, Tinny Tin from um, Vallejo Game Color is actually really good for this. It's one of my go-to colors for dark bronze. So I'm essentially just painting this gun case in here. And also the shoulder pad trim and other little bits of trim on the armor. So with these um, brass, brassy areas, or bronzy areas, now painted. With the base coat, we can now base coat the um, silver metallic areas. And we're going to use a lead belcher, which I'm sure many of you would have probably suspected. So these are areas such as, obviously, the um, these metal areas on the bolt gun. I'm just going to paint all this blade in the belcher. Sight, uh, back as well, and sides of the bullets. Also, um, if this guy has any, he has some on his backpack. All these, like, um, these tubins as well. I'll paint all of them, and of course his plague knife will also be base coated in this colour too. Now if he has any of the, I'm not sure if this guy has any, but if they have any of the pipes that have sort of, um, they have solid colour with the sort of tube, little bits of tube inside, um, anyone who owns these miniatures might know what I mean, and um, paint all them little ridged tubes with this colour as well. So next up, we are going to base coat the horns and any sort of um, like um, rabbin, like um, we have just around the sword. And um, these are going to be base coat coated in um, Rakaf flesh. So this is our final base coat before we start adding some shade to the miniature. You notice know, so I've left all the um, sort of robe and that. Um, in the original Ogren camo. Um, judging by the artwork, um, all their robes and cloth and that is um, in a light green. So I'm going to leave them like, like that and I'll act as a perfect base coat for those areas. So I'm just going to go around the rest of the horns and then we can start adding some depth to the miniature. Okay, so now with all these base colours now applied, I'm going to do a shade over all of these colours, including the armour, with um, Agrax Earthshade. I'm going to thin it down just a little bit, because I don't want to be too overpowering. Now, of course, with the horns and the metal areas, it's pretty straightforward. Just gives it a nice shade. And when it comes to the armor, the purpose of the Agrax, just to tint it slightly, make it a little bit dirtier, which would suit Nurgle very well. And also, just makes this orange just a little bit warmer. Because it sort of has a sort of little pale. Um, look about it at the moment, but this will just, just 
just give it a little bit more warmth to the armour as well as also just bringing out some of the detail a little bit more so try and try and get it nice and even over the armour panels and get it into all the recesses when it comes to the other details and again I'm just mixing it with just a little bit of water just so it's not too overpowering so I'm just going to continue my way around the miniature and then we can come back to um, painting some other details and adding some highlights so the Agrax Earthshade wash is now completely dry you can see it's really added a lot of um, definition to the miniature as well as bringing some of the colours together and adding just a little bit of warmth to that orange. So I'm just going to take the Agrax again and this time I'm just going to apply some just on the ends of these horns on his arm just to make them a little bit darker towards the tips. Uh, if you're painting a Death Guard Marine that doesn't have horns, then obviously you don't need to worry about this step. But a lot of them seem to have horns and such. I'm not going to worry about the horns on his head, although you could if you wanted to. So now we are going to begin um, adding some highlights to some of these colours. We're going to start with all the um, brass bron slash bronze areas and we're going to take some brass scorpion now I actually quite like this colour even though I'm not a massive fan of GW metallics there are a couple I like and this is one of them I'm just going to highlight all these areas and there's a little bit of green just on the skull there but we can just go over that so I'm going to edge highlight around the edge of all this bolt gun casing and on the shoulder pads I'm going to do exactly the same just edge highlight all the way around and also going to catch all of the little rivets on the armour also so these little ones on the shoulder pad Just edge highlight around there like so. So I'll just um, finish doing that and then we'll do the same for all the silver areas. So next up we're going to do exactly the same with the silver parts. I'm going to take some iron breaker for this and once again it's just a case of edge highlighting all the metal areas. So for example we will on the bolt gun, a little bit less on the brush. Go around the barrel and I'll do all these bits on the blade as well. Also have this big spike all right it's just running up there so we'll just go around the edge there and the other little areas we have his knife and other little bits as well and again it's just edge highlighting you could use a light silver I think iron break is light enough it's in just quite dark so then we, are, we will add some rust effects to these later on as well. So next we are going to go back to the bone areas and we're going to take some Bouge Habdi Bone. And this will be our highlight colour for the bone areas. Now I will admit, I'm not 
I'm not brilliant when it comes to painting these sort of bones um, or horns and stuff. So I just paint them quite simple. Just gonna do an edge highlight of your shafty bone. Starting from the base. I thinned it down a little bit because I don't want this to be too stark in contrast at this stage. So just gonna thin out just a little bit more. Just gonna carefully run some thin lines going up the bone. And when it comes to uh, this one on his head, it's just a case of just running some lines across these ridges here. And you also run a line down the centre as well. Also being very careful when you do this. I mean, you could dry brush it, but I don't want to get all all that on other areas as dry brushing is quite messy so just take your time and paint all the ridges and then we can move on to the next detail so next up we're going to paint all the cloth and the tube areas now in the artwork they're a very sort of strange pale green colour and we're going to achieve this by starting with Cyberite green in a 50 50 mix um, with Shabdi bone. So, this is a little experiment. So, I have no idea if this will come out close to the artwork or not, but I have an idea of what to do in mind. So, we're going to base coat all these areas with it and I've thinned it out a fair bit. So, I'll probably need a couple of layers of this. I was toying with um, actually doing all the robes and stuff purple, but I will do the um, tentacles and stuff in that purple. That'll contrast really, really nicely. But I'll keep the rest of this close, as close to the artwork as possible. So he's also got this cloak on his back as well. And we'll do exactly the same colour for all the pipes and stuff. He hasn't got many on. This particular miniature, just a couple up here on his on his backpack, but I'll use a different brush to get at them. Next I'm going to add a shade wash to these parts using a Phonian camo shade. So I'm going to apply this um, not too heavily. This will really um, Dirty it up a little bit, but that's fine because we're going to come back in and highlight it. But let's add a nice, nice depth to these areas. Just try and um, avoid it pooling up too much at the bottoms. Of course, being dark, that doesn't matter for me. Makes it look a little bit dirty and blotchy in places because Nurgle are not known for being clean and neat. And um, with stuff like this, I always like to leave a miniature upside down to dry. Therefore, therefore, um, if a shade does settle, that'll settle in areas that'll look a little bit more natural rather than at the bottom. So he's going to go and dry upside down, and then when he's back, we shall add some highlights. So with the shade wash now fully drying, see we've got this sort of nice dirty sort of pale green um, look on the robes. It's pretty cool. Um, so now we're going to just add a little bit of a highlight to that. So I've gone back to our Cyberite Green and New Shabdi Bone mix and I've just mixed in a tiny little bit more Shabdi Bone to it. So actually I'm not going to use that brush, I'm going to go back to my smaller brush. Now you could um, reapply original mix before going on to these highlights but I'm just going to go straight to the highlights keep that sort of nice dirty look so I've thinned it down as you probably would have guessed by now whenever it comes to highlights especially edge highlights and highlights like this always best to have a paint thin so it flows, flows better and then as it dries as well, it won't be so stuck. So 
I'm going to follow this line here. And I'm just going to edge highlight all the bottom and the edges as well. And on the front, pretty much exactly the same. Just follow this line here. And I'll edge highlight the bottom and the edges on there as well. So that highlight done. I have quite a cool looking green for his robes and that I'm actually quite happy with how that's come out. I've just done a little tiny little highlight on the pipes as well. So the last detail left to paint on this guy is all his little tentacles and stuff coming out. And then after that we're just going to add a little bit of rust and corrosion to the metal areas. So we'll start by doing the tentacles and we're going to take some Xerus purple. So this purple will offer a really nice contrast to the oranges and greens of his armour. So it should look really nice. And I'll really make these areas stand out. So there's quite a few on this guy. You notice there's all these little pustules and stuff on the armour um, also. I'm just going to leave them green but you could add some yellow glaze over them or some even some shabby bone or something um, if you wish. So he's just got some on his leg and I think it's just these ones on here. I'm also going to paint the eye of the plague bearer sort of head that he's got coming out of his arm as well. So next up we're going to take some Gene Steeler purple and I'm going to thin this down just a little bit and we're going to paint this towards the ends of all the tentacles. So it just gives them this sort of lighter sort of gradient going out towards the ends. Again, like the armor, if you really want to, you could do a couple of glazes to really build up a nice gradient. But I'm not. Again, I'm not too fussed about that. We're going to go over with a shade wash in the next step, and that will bring the colors together just a little bit. I just noticed there's a tiny little bit one wrapping around his arm there, so I'll go back and paint that and then we'll get our wash. So, it'll be no surprise to you guys that the wash we're going to use is Jerucci Violet. So, I'm just going to carefully apply this just on these tentacles. Just add a little bit of depth to them and it'll bring these two colours together quite nicely. Then lastly we're going to take some pink horror and this will be our little highlight. I've thinned out once again, I'll try and get in shot. And then we'll just do a fine highlight just towards the end of these tentacles. You could go all the way up if you want but this gives an impression of these tentacles getting lighter as they reach the end and there's some little bits up here where we might just do some little bits as well uh, so I don't know if my thumb was in the way then um, just little ridges here Make it just a little bit more interesting. To thin that out just a bit more. And then the final step will just be to dirty up some of the metallics. So there are a couple of ways that you can go about 
um, making the metallics look all old and worn. And if you'd have watched um, some of my banjitsu videos on painting um, various types of metals, um, these techniques um, are pretty much the same. I'm sure most of you already know um, what to do here anyway. Um, we are using little technical paints. So we're taking some nylac oxide for the bronze areas. And I'm gonna thin it out because I really don't want it to be too strong with this. And essentially we are just gonna go around the little rivets and stuff on the shoulder pad, just around some of these areas. Horns, now um, this sort of represents the oxidization on the metal. And if you're not sure where exactly to put this, just think about um, where water would mostly settle on these areas, so you could run a thin line of it along the base of the shoulder pad and in these little, some of these little grooves as well. And because I've thinned it out, it's going to dry quite dark, so it won't be too overpowering. If you go too heavy with this, it's just going to look all blotchy and green, and that might be what what you want and what you like, but um, I like to keep this nice and subtle, sort of less is more approach with this. You can stick some in the skull's eyes. Just a little bit along the top. Like so. For the silver areas we are going to take some riser rust and we're just going to dry brush this. As it is of course a dry compound. I really like this Arisa Rust. You can simply just dry brush some orange and you'll get a similar effect. So we'll start with the spike up here. I'm just gradually building it up very slowly. Again, I don't want to go overboard, I don't want to paint the thing orange. I just want to give it that little rust effect. Some on the sword as well. And I'll just do some on the bottom, and then we'll have one final little step, and then he'll be done. So, the final step is just to take some typhus corrosion, which is one of my favourite technical paints. This is just like a sort of little dirty. Not a dirty paint, basically, um, it's essentially like adding little bits of mud and corrosion and stuff to your miniature. Now you could apply it on parts of the armour if you want that really dirty, nergly feeling, like um, especially in some of these little sort of holes and dents in the armour. It works quite well going in them. I'm also going to use it on some of the metallic areas. I'm going to use it very sparingly, um, it's tiny little random points, maybe a little bit around there, I want some on the gun, this is, um, a lot of the rust just caught these higher edges, so I'm going to add some dirt and stuff into the lower points, a little bit on the bullets, definitely some on the back here as well, it really makes the metal look very Dirty and very nergly, we'll do some on the sword also, a little bit at the top there. And then we'll just do a tiny little random bit just on the shoulder pad. And maybe just around these cracks, so, it's too much. <laughs> I'm just going to get my smaller brush, so I just want to run just a little bit in this arm here, no that's gone way too much but it's quite thin so we can just smooth out like that, so almost like using it like a little wash, just to give a bit more definition there and a little bit more dirt on the arms.
And with that, I am quite happy to say that, apart from his base, of course, um, he is done. So here is the finished miniature. I apologise if there's a slight hum from the tan table, but I thought I'd put him on here, show him off um, from all angles. Um, he's great fun to paint. Um, as I said um, earlier, I have, have an airbrush and all the other guys in this army for this card scheme. But considering I did this one by brush, I'm really happy with the outcome. And perhaps even more so, um, it gives you a little bit more control over where all the orange areas go. So if you guys have enjoyed this painting tutorial, please um, give it a thumbs up. You can also subscribe to our channel if you haven't done so already. Um, we'll also put a couple of videos up on the screen that you might want to check out also. You can also check out our Patreon, where we are running a giveaway this month, so anyone who subscribes um, and supports us to our, on our Patreon um, this month will go into a prize draw for some um, pretty cool Primaris Marine giveaways. So all that's left to say is thank you so much for watching, I'll see you all in the next video.